So I'm going to try and run through some of my thoughts on RC filters. Uh, as always, <laughs> this is how I understand them. I'm sure I'm going to make mistakes, but um, I, I think watching me work through some of the thought process will be valuable for some people. RC filters depend on resistor and capacitor filter networks, depend on a property of capacitors called the capacitive reactance. And that is a, um, a term that you use to describe the frequency dependence of a capacitor's resistance. Um, so we think of capacitors as short circuits for alternating current or, or f signals that are fluctuating. And they, are, they block DC signals. Um, and the reason for that is um, at a steady state current, a capacitor will charge up. But since there's no electrical connection between these two, plates, then no current flows. So if the current flowing in is constant, then what that means is um, this charge on the capacitor will build up to a point where it can't hold any more charge and then no current will flow. So initially there will be a bit of current flowing here. The charges will build up on the plates and then it'll get to a point where the capacitor can't um, hold any more charge, and unless the voltage, the potential, the voltage potential between these two points is um, greater than the breakdown voltage of this capacitor, where it starts to arc over and conduct, then no more current will flow. So what is this notion of capacitive reactance? If we have an alternating current source, the charge on this capacitor um, will first of all, increase as the current increases over time. And then as the current decreases, as the amount of charge that's uh, accumulating here starts to decrease, then the charge across here will decrease. So what that means is that this side, there will be an induced um, current relative to the um, current flowing on this side. And so you get, the, you get effective current flowing through your circuit. And the way you um, quantify that is through the following formula. I'm not going to do any deriving of it, but the capacitive reactance is equal to 1 over 2 pi, the frequency of this alternating current, or that signal, um, times the capacitance in farads. So this is in hertz, cycles per second, and this is in farads. And that gives you the capacitive reactance. And so let's take a look at what um, the capacitive um, reactance is for a couple of frequencies, and we'll do some, some, uh, some calculations. So we're going to take a look at a 220 nanofarad capacitor, and we're going to um, take a look at um, its reactive capacitance at 1 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz. 220 times 10 to the negative 9 nanofarads, not microfarads. So, 2.2 <clears throat> times 10 to the negative 7, but then I'm mm, taking another 3, 10 to the negative 4. Okay, so that's about 723 ohms, and at 20 kilohertz, we've got 2 pi, 2 times 10 to the 4, which is 20 kilo hertz times 2.2 times 10 to the negative 7, 9, 7. So that's equal to 1 over 2 pi 4 point times 4.4 4 times 10 to the negative 3. And that's approximately equal to uh, 30 six ohms. So what we see is that the we're calling the capacitive the capacitive reactance 
changes depending on the frequency that you um, are feeding in for your signal. So if we put a sine wave in here at one kilohertz, this capacitor is going to have an effective resistance of 723 ohms. But if it's at 20,000 or 20 kilohertz, its resistance drops to 36 ohms. So what does that mean? Remember up here in this circuit, we now have a variable resistor whose resistance depends on the frequency that's coming in here. We have a resistor here, and so now we have a voltage divider created by these two resistors. So what that is, and this voltage divider is dependent on um, the frequency. So what voltage comes out here is going to depend on the frequency that's being fed in here. And that's essentially how an RC filter works. So let's take a look at this, um, this a bit this formula a bit more closely and maybe draw a little qualitative graph of how that thing behaves. As this frequency gets very, very large, this um, capacitive reactance is going to get very, very small because we've got this in the denominator. And as this approaches zero, this is going to get small and this is going to get very large. So we have what looks like this as a mapping between frequency and the capacitive reactance. So as our frequency gets high, our capacitive reactance gets much lower. Notice that sort of bears out here. When our frequency was here, we had some high capacitive reactance. And when our frequency was over here, we had a lower capacitive reactance. And as this number gets larger, this entire number will get smaller until it approaches zero. So at high, high frequencies, um, much larger than 20 kilohertz, um, this capacitor will end up being um, effectively a short circuit. And that's why we say that capacitors have a short circuit for high frequencies. So let's do a little experiment with a signal generator and um, and a simple circuit to see if we can um, observe that behavior um, uh, on an oscilloscope. Okay, so here's my circuit. We're going, we're going to take a look at this capacitor. Um, we're feeding our signal, our 20,000 hertz signal, into, uh, into, the, into the circuit. We are going to measure the voltage across this 10k resistor and we'll take a look at the way the frequency um, affects the amplitude of the signal the output signal which is a measure of the of the um, voltage and as you can see well, let me start going down by smaller and smaller amounts as you can see now if I'm dropping down by Hands, you can see that the amplitude of the sine wave is getting slower, lower and lower. And as I increase my frequency, the amplitude of the sine wave gets larger and larger until we get to a point where it is effectively as large. Uh, it, we, we don't get any more uh, increase and we're at basically a short circuit for that that signals above that frequency now what that means is we have created a variable voltage divider based on frequency and that's all an rc filter is it is a frequency dependent voltage divider. So you're reducing the potential of your signal depending on what frequency. And when you have it in, this, this is a simple example of an R, 
C high pass filter because as you increase your frequency you get more of your signal that's transmitted through the filter. And we'll take a look at what happens, how you create a low pass filter next. Okay, so now I've exchanged the role of the fixed resistor and the capacitor in the circuit, feeding um, my signal in to the input side and reading the signal across the capacitor this time. And here we see, if we start out at um, four, um, 4 kilohertz and we start going down, we will get more and more signal as we get closer and closer to zero hertz. So what that means is we've got a high pass or a low pass filter here. It passes signals below a certain value. So the higher we um, the higher we go, the um, the more signal passes. Sorry, the lower the frequency goes, the more signal passes, um, and then the higher the frequency the go goes, the less signal passes. So if we start, let's say we start at 100. Okay. <clears throat> so if we start at 100 hertz in our new configuration where we've got a resistor and and the capacitor in the opposite position. So the capacitor is what we're going to measure the signal across with our signal feeding into the fixed resistor. And we've got a common ground. So now what we're going to do is we're going to slowly increase the, uh, the frequency. And we're going to notice that the amplitude of the signal will start to decrease once we get up uh, in to a higher range. Yeah, that's probably not gonna, let's do that a bit faster. So yeah, so once we get past about 300, 400 hertz, we start to see a decrease in the signal. And that just continues until we get well into, you know, the, the thousand hertz range. And we see it attenuating very, very highly until, well, let's see, uh, let's see until we get up into the three or 4,000 range where we've got a, you know, a small fraction of our input signal left. So yeah, that is a low pass filter. So what did we create? We created two, a frequency dependent voltage divider. And how does that look? So we've got some signal here with some frequency and it's got some voltage um, and it feeds a capacitor and then we've got some resistor here so this has a resistance this has a, a variable resistance depending on frequency this has a resistance and we have our V out V in so this would be peak to peak or RMS or however you want to however you want to measure it. And this would be our V out. So now, if we do a mapping of voltage versus frequency, as the frequency increased on this configuration, we got more and more signal through. So it looked something like this. So as frequency gets larger, our voltage, transfer voltage gets higher. So at low frequencies, we got very little voltage through, but at high frequencies, we got more voltage through. So this is the high pass filter configuration. And if we put our voltage divider in this configuration where we put the capacitor, we're using the capacitor as the output element of our uh, of our voltage divider. I'm calling this the output element because it 
we're measuring the output across it, V out, V in. What that looked like was this. At low frequencies, we had um, we had a, uh, a high voltage, but then that fell off as we as we increased the frequency. And so what this is is a low pass filter. Okay, so kind of frequency dependent voltage divider. I was treating all of the effect of this capacitor as purely resistive, but it's not. It's <clears throat> because in a capacitor, the, um, the, f the current lags, the lags or leads, I forget the voltage. There is a phase difference and you can model that uh, as what's called a phaser. And if this is the voltage component and this is the current component, this is the resultant vector of the voltage and the current. So really what you're talking about is not purely resistive, but a reactive load. And in order to properly model all of these things, <clears throat> you need to take into account the fact that the current lags or leads the, um, the voltage. Now, um, for many applications, it doesn't matter. You can go ahead and use the, um, the equations, the analysis that we just did, and it, it's not going to make much of a difference. Um, I just don't want to leave the impression with people that this is the absolute truth, because it's actually not. There is more complicated stuff going on, but for gaining an intuition about how these things behave, this is a reasonable model. As a first order approximation for how RC filters work, this is a pretty reasonable model to use. If you have to get into anything more um, fancy, we're, you're probably going to have to get out the uh, the complex mathematics and and understand the reactants in capacitors in order to properly model. But like I said, first order approximation, reasonable enough. You can get quite a bit of mileage out of thinking about RC um, filters using using the analysis that I've just done. Um, okay, um, I hope that was helpful. Uh, obviously, if you have any questions, um, leave them in the comments. I will try and answer them as best I can. And thanks for watching and talk to you soon.